Hello and welcome back to Nippers at Home. My name is Erin and I'm from Sorrento Surf Life Saving Club. And my name's Lockie and I'm from the Black Rock Life Saving Club. Hope everyone's been practicing their beach signals from last week. Give me a message understood if you have been. Sure can. Today you're in for a treat as we practice our first aid and learn about different wave types and how to catch those waves. We'll also learn how Life Saving Victoria works with different emergency services. Make sure you have a clear space around you so you can move freely. To start us off today, we have Chantel with a fun game to get us up, active and moving. Make sure you've got your nippers cap, your pink rashies. Let's go have some fun. Hi, it's Chantal from Bo Morris Life Saving Club here again this week with her two amazing nippers assistants. Say hi, girls. We're here to play a great game called Lifesaver Says. You might um, think it sounds a little bit familiar, and that's because it is. It's exactly like Simon Says, but instead of Simon, it's a lifesaver. We're going to be doing some associated exercises, which we've done in previous weeks. We've done the squats. Do you remember these? Driving through the back of the heel. That's it, nice work. We get, we've done sprinting on the spot. We've done our jumping jacks. But there are two new exercises which we haven't covered yet. The first is the V-sit. So girls, are you going to demonstrate those? So you really want to engage the core and try and make a bit of a V-shape. So if you're nice and flexible, which Neve is, you can lift those legs, but it works you a little bit harder. And then the second exercise is the commando crawl. So this one, knee to elbow, and you're gonna crawl along. So knee to elbow, knee to elbow, and back again. So mum and dad, a bit like when you're looking for the Lego <laughs> at the end of the day. All right, so lifeguard or life saver says squats. That's it, nice work. See if I can trick these two. Lifesaver says sprinting on the spot. Squats. Oh. Lifesaver says V-sits. Sprinting on the spot. Ah, I got you out. <laughs> Did I get anybody out at home yet? Lifesaver says commando crawls. So remember, onto all fours, knee to elbow. Squats. Lifesaver says squats. So remember, driving down to the back of the legs. Yep, that's it. Brilliant work. Let's go into our jumping jacks. Oh, I didn't trick you there. Life saver says jumping jacks. Life saver says sprinting on the spot. Life saver says sprinting on the spot. Sprinting on the spot. Ah, uh, <laughs> no, that wasn't fair really, was it? Okay, let's go into our V-sits. Lifesaver says V-sits. That's it, nice work. And Lifesaver says squats. I think we've done quite a lot now. I'm hoping I didn't um, manage to get too many of you out at home. You should be feeling warm now and ready to get into the rest of Nippers at Home. We'll see you again next week. Say bye, girls. Hi, everyone. I'm Lockie, and I'm from the Black Rock Life Saving Club. And my name's Dylan, and I'm from the Black Rock and Elwood Life Saving Clubs. Today, we're going to be going through some first aid skills that we can learn and use in our everyday life. We're going to be doing three things. We're going to do burns first. Then we're going to learn how to treat some cuts. And the last thing we're going to be doing is sprains and strains. For this, we'll need a couple of things. First thing we'll need is a drink bottle with some water in it. The second thing we'll need is a towel or scarf, but make sure you ask mum or dad for permission first. We'll also need some band-aids or bandages or something similar that you can use. Now, if you don't have these things, that's okay. You can just follow along and play pretend with us. Dylan, have we forgotten anything? 
Who's our patient, Lockie? Oh, that's right. You need a teddy bear. We've got our friend Nigel here, who's going to be our patient for the day. You can also get a teddy or a pillow to treat. Now that we're ready, it's time to learn about first aid. Let's go. Oh my goodness, Nigel, are you okay? Everyone, Nigel's fallen over with a hot cup of tea and it looks like he's burnt himself and he might have sprained his ankle and he's cut his foot. Oh no, Nigel, are you going to be okay? Hang on a second, Lockie. Let's stop. We don't need to panic. Okay. We can do some proper first aid. First aid? Well, what's first aid? Well, first aid is the first care given to someone who is hurt or needs our help. Oh, so like Nigel here. Nigel's hurt, isn't he? Exactly like Nigel. He could use some first aid. Oh, so why is it important that we give first aid? Well, first aid is really important because when we call for help, it doesn't always come straight away. So we can help this person while we wait. So what are some easy steps that we can do straight away to make sure that we're giving good first aid? Well, if we rewind a little bit, okay. the first thing we should do is look for dangers to us. Oh, that's right. We're the most important. Okay, so some dangers here could be the hot liquid that Nigel spilt, or if the glass is broken, that could cut me, and that's not good. That's exactly right. Once we know that it's safe for us to help, we need to call someone to come help us. Do you remember the number that we need to call? Oh, I remember this one. Uh, triple zero. We should call triple zero. All right. That's I'm right. I'm my phone out and calling triple zero right now. All right. Yeah, help is on its way. Great. Make sure we're still pretending at home. We don't want to actually call triple zero. But now we know help's on the way, we can do some first aid while we wait. All right, let's treat the burn first. All right, the first thing we're going to treat is, is burns. What's our first step in doing first aid? Well, that's right. It's checking for dangers. So we've got to make sure the area is safe and we're also going to pretend to put on our gloves. Oh, we're putting on our personal protective equipment. Perfect. Well, the next thing we need to work out is what the problem is. Now, we already know that Nigel has burnt himself cut himself and sprained his ankle. And the first one we're going to look at is the burn. What is a burn, Dylan? Well, a burn is when anything extremely hot or extremely cold comes into contact with the body and hurts us in some way. Oh, so for Nigel, that was the hot tea which has burnt his hand. That's right, yeah. So we're going to treat that in a few different ways to make sure he feels a little bit better. All right, let's look at our first aid kit and see what we need to treat Nigel's burn. That's right, we're going to use running water. You can use a tap at home. Lockie's going to use his water bottle today. So, I've got my water. What's my, what should I do now? Well, the first thing we need to do is find out where Nigel has hurt himself. So, we can look and check, or we can ask him if he's able to talk to us. Oh, hey, Nigel, where's Saul? Where have you burnt yourself? You burnt yourself on your hand? Okay, let's treat the hand. All right, I'm going to get my running water. You can do this as well. And we're going to pour it onto the hand. Continuous running water onto the burn. Perfect. All right, Dylan, why, why do I do this instead of using ice? Because ice is cold as well, isn't it? That's right. But if we've been extremely hot, we don't want to then put something extremely cold. Remember, that can burn us too. So we want to be right in the middle. We're going to get some uh, tepid running water over it. OK, Nige, how's that feeling? Is it starting to feel a bit better? All right, how long should I do this for, Dylan? Well, you can do it for 20 minutes until help arrives, or until Nigel starts to feel a little bit better. Oh, okay. So, Nigel, you feeling a bit better? Oh, great. That's awesome. All right, we've treated the burn. What are we going to treat next? Well, the next thing we're going to treat is his cuts. Awesome. Can't wait. Our first step is always danger and protecting ourselves. We've already got our gloves on from last time. So, what do you think we'll need to treat a cut? Let's look at our first aid kit. We've already used the water. 
Of the remaining two, which one should we use? That's right. We're going to use our Band-Aid or bandages. Now, if you don't have these things around home, that's okay too. You can use a clean cloth. Just make sure you've got permission to use it first. Okay, Dylan. We, I can see that Nigel has cut his foot. What do we do first? Well, whenever we're treating cuts and bleeding, we need to do two things. Mm. The first thing is we need to put pressure on the injured area. Okay, so I'm going to grab my clean cloth and I'm going to put pressure on. All right, Nigel, is that feeling okay? Great, awesome. Can I get you to hold that on there? Now, we can use Nigel's hand to put pressure on the wound because that's safer for us. And you remember, we're the most important person. Mm, awesome. I'm also going to wrap this in a bandage to maintain that pressure so Nigel doesn't have to hold it. While I do that, Dylan, what do I do next? Well, the second thing is rest. Now, we want to keep Nigel really calm. Right? That will make sure the situation doesn't get any worse. So we're going to talk to him, make sure that he's feeling okay, and tell him what we're doing as we're doing it. Hey, Nigel, you're doing a great job. You're such a brave bear. How's that feeling? Is it starting to feel better? Oh, that's great. You are an awesome bear, Nigel. Great job. Now that we've covered cuts and bleeding, we're going to look at our sprained ankle. So we've treated Nigel's burns, his cuts. The last thing we've got to treat is, is sprains. Dylan, how do we treat sprains? So the first thing we need to do is we need to ask Nigel what he's hurt and how he's hurt it. Hey, Nigel, what have you hurt and how have you hurt it? Oh, you've hurt your ankle by tripping over. That's not good. I'm sorry about that. All right. Let's look at our first aid kit one last time to see what we can use. We've used our water, we've used our band-aids and bandages. What's the last thing we can use? The last one left to use is our ice pack and our compression bandage. Awesome. So Dylan, what is a sprain? A sprain is a type of injury that happens inside the body at oh. one of our joints. It can be very, very serious, or it can just hurt you a lot. Mm. It looks like Nigel's in a bit of pain. All right, what can we do to help Nigel with his sprain? Well, we have an acronym that helps us remember how to treat a sprain and strain. Wow, I love acronyms. I remember this one. Um, it's called RICER, isn't it? That's right. Why don't I treat Nigel and you walk me through it? Awesome. All right. So our first step is R, which is rest. Dylan, what should we do for rest? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Nigel to lie down on his back for me. That will keep him very calm and also help me treat his effective ankle. Great. So we've, we've done rest. The next step is I for ice. So, what I'm going to do is grab an ice pack out of the freezer and get Nigel to hold that on there for me. Now, I can hold that there for up to 10 minutes and two days after the injury, it'll still help. Wow, awesome. So, we've done R, I. The next thing in RICER is C, compression. Dylan, what should we do for compression? So, for compression, I'm going to use my compression bandage. That will limit swelling in the area and make sure that we are on the way to recovery. Awesome, while you put on that compression bandage, I'm gonna talk through E, which is elevation. So we need to make sure that the affected limb or area of the body is elevated above the heart. And what this does, it helps reduce swelling. How are you going there, Dill? Almost done. Great, so the last step after we've done elevation is referral. For all the things that Nigel has, has hurt today, he's cut himself, he's burnt himself, and now he's sprained his ankle, we need to refer Nigel on to a doctor or a healthcare professional. So Nigel, could you go to the doctor? Great. Awesome. Well, Nigel looks like he's been through the wars a bit, but I'm sure he's feeling a lot better. Hey Nigel, are you feeling better? 
Well done to you at home as well for helping Nigel out. Give yourselves and Nigel a round of applause. Now, we've learned a lot today. We've learned about burns, about cuts, and about sprains. We need to remember that Firstly, in first aid, you are most important. So we need to protect ourselves and use PPE. What else do we need to remember, Dylan? We need to remember that if you are in any doubt, you can always call for help. Remember to call 000. Amazing. Thanks so much for, for joining us today for first aid. You did an amazing job. Bye. Bye, nippers. Does anyone at home know how waves are formed? I do. A wave's formed by wind blowing across the water right out at sea. And once that ocean wave reaches the shore, it will form up into one of three different wave types depending on how steep the ocean floor is. Does anyone at home know the three different types of waves? I've heard of a spilling wave. What are the other types? Well, there's also a surging wave and a plunging wave. That's interesting. What would a plunging wave look like? A plunging wave has a really steep face and often with a curling edge to it. What would I need to know about this wave type? Well, these waves can be quite powerful and quite dangerous. And they're dangerous because they pick up the swimmer and they can dump it in down into shallow water. Um, you might often see some surfers also catching these waves and going through a barrel. Can you explain what a spilling wave would look like? So a spilling wave um, has a gentle sloping face and has white water coming down the front of it. What would I need to know about this wave? Well, these waves are really fun to catch and probably the easiest waves to catch as well. Can you explain what a surging wave would look like? A surging wave is a big unbroken wave. What would I need to know about this sort of wave? These waves, whilst they're unbroken, um, they could still lift you off your feet and put you into a different spot. Now we've had a look at the different types of waves. Let's see how to catch them. So what are the different types of waves that you've caught a wave? I've used a nipper board, a body board, but my favourite would have to be a surfboard. That's pretty cool. My favourite way is to body surf. How would you catch a wave body surfing? Well, body surfing is much like catching a wave on a board. I'm going to grab a pillow and show you how to do it. Okay, so I've got my pillow. I'm going to be laying down on my pillow. Now, the beach is this side and the wave's out here. Can you be a wave for me? Sure. Woohoo! Okay, so I'm going to dive into the water and I'm going to start swimming out until I find my wave. Once I find my wave, I'm going to spin around. And I'm going to start kicking really, really hard with a freestyle stroke. Once I find that wave saying to pick me up and push me forward, I'm going to go into a really tight torpedo, making sure my head is sandwiched in between my arms. I'm going to keep kicking really, really hard. That's when I catch the wave. If I need to take a breath, I'm going to do one freestyle stroke, <gasps> take a breath, and go all the way back down. Now once I get to shore and want to get off this wave or slow down, I'm going to put my head up, put my arms out, and that's going to slow me down. Okay? Now, I reckon it's a great time for you guys to try at home. So you go grab your pillows. Take your pillow in the middle here. Once again, okay. So we're going to start swimming out into the waves, okay? Everyone do this at home. You're going to start swimming out into the waves, into the break zone. And now you find, and you look up and you see the wave that you want to catch. Oh. So what are you going to do? I'm going to turn around. I'm going to go in my torpedo position. I'm going to kick as fast as I can. Okay, so you kick really, really fast. Now you've got to make sure you keep your head down. So if you keep your head down, your body's going to be nice and flat, nice and straight, and then you're going to go the fastest through the wave. What if, what happens if you need to take a breath? I'm going to do a stroke, I'm going to take a breath. Fantastic, now that wave is crashing and spilling behind you and you want to get off the wave, what do you do? 
and put my hands out in front of me, put my head up and look straight towards the beach. Fantastic. Okay. That was really awesome. How'd you go at home? What we're going to do next is do the Wicked Wave Workout. Welcome to the Wicked Wave Workout. Today, you're going to be needing a cushion and yourselves. We ready to go? Okay, let's get started. We're first going to start off with running. So you're going to be running from the start line into the water. So you're going to practice some high knees. Okay, race has started. You're going to run as fast as you can into the water. We've got 20 of these. Okay, and we're in the water. What do we do now? All right, now we're going to jump over the way. So you're going to do some tuck jumps. 10 of these. There. Okay, we're through the water and it's up to our waist, so we're gonna to have to be dolphin diving through these. So we're gonna be doing some squats with some arms, ready? And squat. Ten of these. That's five. And ten, okay. You're into deeper water now, so we're gonna to have to be swimming through the waves. Okay, so we're just gonna start off. Swing our arms. That's what we're swimming. Four, three, two, one. And we're going to be using our arms swimming, so we're going to be doing some push-ups as well. Okay. So you're going to get on the ground and do some push-ups. We're going to do five push-ups. All right. Let's get started. Ready? If you can't do full push-ups, you can do them on your knees. Okay. One, two. Three, four, five, fantastic. Oh no, there's a wave coming. You're oh, gonna no. have to swim and body surf and catch this one in. All right. So you're gonna be laying on your pillow and you're gonna have to swim really, really hard using your legs and using your arms. Like we did before, you've caught the wave, so you have to torpedo yourself, but keep kicking those legs. Okay, now you gotta take a breath as you're body surfing and back into it. And as you near the beach, what are you going to do to slow yourself down? Oh, Lift our head up. Okay, fantastic. Now you're back in the water, back at the beach, so we're going to have to dive back out of the water. So dolphin squats again. Okay, almost there. Another four, three, two, one. All right, you're almost at the beach now, so you're going to do some tuck jumps. Almost out the finish line now, we're out of the water, high knees, 20 of these. Almost there. All right, we've made it to the finish line. Ooh. Good job, everybody. I am absolutely knackered after that. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us today. That's it for Waves. See ya. Hello everybody, my name is Dan Sullivan and I'm from Woolamai Beach Surf Lifesaving Club. And today, I'd like to talk to you about how I started as a nipper and I worked through to become a paramedic with Ambulance Victoria. Now, come for a little ride, hop in my ambulance and let's have a chat. Welcome inside my ambulance. So, just like you at home, I'd like to talk about how I began as a nipper. I had lots and lots of fun completing competitions on weekends, I made lots of friends, and through my involvement with my nippers, I learned lots and lots of surf skills. And it was from here that I knew straight away that I wanted to be a lifesaver. But to become a lifesaver, I knew that I had to work very hard to gain my bronze medallion and learn all the different elements of water safety. After that, when I participated in my volunteer weekends as a volunteer lifesaver, my passion for lifesaving really ignited. After doing lots of hours of volunteer patrol as a bronze medallion holder, I knew that I wanted to gain my silver medallion. Through that period, I was able to learn lots of new first aid skills. I was taught how to drive the IRB, a lot of fun. And so I continued to work very hard and I eventually gained my gold medallion. After that, and through all that process, I had access to lots of leaders, 
lots of role models, people that I looked up to in my surf life saving club. And eventually, one of those people who I really admired, can you guess what they did for a job? They were a paramedic. And I knew that one day I was gonna be a paramedic. So, I'm enlisting the help of my little friend here. His name's Stretch. And unfortunately today, Stretch has hurt his leg. So, me being the paramedic, is gonna take Stretch up to the hospital. And I'm gonna show you what little people like Stretch and yourselves, if you ever need a ride to the hospital, get to ride on. All right, Stretch, here we go, mate. You're gonna hop on our harness. Safety belts come over your shoulders. There you go, nice and comfy. And then you get one over your lap. Good boy, doing such a great job there, Stretch. Okay, last but not least, our red belt and our blue belts. Comfy Stretch, good man. Okay, wait there. Good boy, Stretch. Okay, a couple of noises. All right, ever seen the movie Transformers? Here we go. Good boy, Stretch. Well done, mate. Okay, and just like Stretch, super brave, nothing to be worried about. And now you're ready to go up to the hospital and get your leg looked at. So now once you're inside the ambulance and you're going for a ride up to the hospital, there's a few things I'd like to show you. Now, this one here is a balloon. A green balloon, and this goes on your arm. Nothing to be afraid of. I'll show you on stretch. Can I borrow your arm, stretch? Good man, thank you, mate. There you go. Also, I've got these funny ears, and this enables me to listen to your breathing, listen to your heartbeat. All right, stretch, just some nice breathing. Good boy, big breath. Good job, mate. Fantastic. And when you're very well behaved, we give you little stickers, which are like good work stickers, star stickers. And these goes on your arm and legs. One. Two. Three. And last one here, stretch. Four. Good boy, mate. You're a very well behaved patient. And that's really it. So next time you're inside an ambulance, there's nothing to be worried about. And if you have any questions, just ask your very friendly paramedic. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you for having us. Stretch and I have had a lot of fun. We hope you've learned lots as well. We've got to go back to work now. And because Stretch has been such a great patient, would you like to turn the beacons on for everybody? Don't tell anybody. Okay, say bye, bye. Good boy. See you, everybody. Bye. You all did such an amazing job today. Make sure you're using the hashtag LSB Water Safety at Home and tag at Lifesaving Victoria. I bet you can't wait to go down to the beach and practice your wave catching skills. And find out what wave types are at your local beach. Next week, we find out what we can do in emergency and practice our Iron Woman and Iron Man skills. You can also tune in for Swimming at Home Thursdays at 4.30. It's a hoot. See you next Tuesday for more Nippers at Home. See ya.